Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I am your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 107 of our trek. And yesterday we discovered that you are the leading character or star in the story of your life. You learned that if your life is like a movie, then you need to make it a great one for you and your supporting characters. And it should be filled with the scenes that matter most. Today we want to determine how our life is like a bell. In celebration of our 100th day of our Wisdom Trek, please check out wisdom-trek.com and sign up for a free Wisdom Trek t-shirt drawing that will take place on October 5th. We will be giving away seven t-shirts. We are recording our podcast from our studios at Home 2 in Charlotte, North Carolina. We are getting focused on the client work that we need to accomplish this week. The first day after traveling is usually a bit of adjustment. But we are making good progress catching up on some of the work details that were somewhat behind on schedule, and it'll take us probably a couple days to catch up. But now it's time to break camp and head out for our trek for today. We are making good progress over the summits and through the valleys. We go past the meadows and the rivers. As we crest the hill, we hear from deep within the valley a distinct ringing of a church bell calling out to the people of the village that it is time to come to worship and fellowship together. In today's hectic and fast-paced world, we reflect fondly on a more simple time when we took time to come together as a like-minded community. Just like people, there are many different kinds of bells. Church bells ring their melodious song while clang, clang, clang goes the trolley. There are cowbells and sleigh bells, school bells, dinner bells, doorbells, and handbells. And probably the most famous bell of all is the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. Bells have actually been an important part of my life. Growing up on the farm, we had a big train bell mounted on the back of the house, which we could hear just about anywhere over the entire hundred acres of our property. One would call us in from the orchard or the valley where we were playing or the lake where we were fishing for dinner and other important matters. At the big house in Marietta, we have a large train bell mounted outside the back door that my granny always rang loud and long when company was leaving after an extended stay as she waved her hand and shouted goodbye. We still use it for that purpose today. When our kids were still living at home, Paula would have different types of bells on each of the three floors. A cowbell for the attic when we had our home school up there, a small dinner bell for the second floor, and an electronic bell for the first floor. The kids always knew which floor to come to based on the bell that we used. It sure saved a lot of shouting around a big house when we needed to round up our children. This also reminds me that our lice are like a bell. Each bell is designed for a specific purpose. It can ring loud or soft. It can ring fast or slow, but it should always ring true based on the type of bell. But one truth that is undeniable, though, is that you can never unring a bell. The expression that you cannot unring a bell has been frequently used in our courts of law. Once an attorney makes a statement or presents evidence, jurors can't unring that bell or unhear what they have heard or unsee what they have seen. If the statement or evidence is later found to be inadmissible, it could be grounds for a mistrial. Unring a bell has been cited in many legal decisions. Politicians also know that they can't unring a bell. Statements and actions cannot be erased from the public's mind. And there are many idioms similar to unringing the bell, such as you can't unscramble eggs or you can't put toothpaste back in the tube. This is why it's so important to always engage our brain before we engage our mouth. Once a word is spoken, it cannot be unspoken. Proverbs 15.28 says it this way, The heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking. The mouth of the wicked overflows with evil words. And also in Proverbs 10.11, it says, The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. The words of the wicked conceal their violent intentions. Now the old axiom, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me, is just not true. Words can wound deeply. So be very careful what you say and how you say it. Some people remember much longer than others, and when we are wounded, it is hard to forgive and forget, especially if it's an ongoing practice by the offender. The book of Proverbs has so many verses about how we should and should not speak. The words that hurt the most are the ones that come from the ones that we love or that should love us, such as Proverbs 11.9, With their words the godless destroy their friends. Proverbs 15.1, Harsh words make tempers flare. And Proverbs 15.4, the deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Encouraging words, on the other hand, can be a life-giving force, such as Proverbs 6.24, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. And Proverbs 18.20, wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. And in the New Testament, Ephesians 4.29, 
Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those that hear them. If you find yourself wishing that you could unring the bell, consider how much time that you spend talking. For it says in Proverbs 10:19, too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. And also remember that a closed mouth gathers no foot. While I'm not a proponent of living in the past at all, the past should be a, a teaching tool for us. No, you can't unring a bell, but the next time that you do ring a bell, make sure that the purpose is to help, encourage, and build others up. If you find yourself the recipient of someone else's thoughtless or cruel words, make sure that your bell continues to ring true. We are encouraged to do this in the first letter that the Apostle Peter wrote, chapter 3, verses 9 through 11. And he said, Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. This is what God has called you to do, and He will grant you His blessing. For the Scriptures say, If you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. So regardless of what type of bell that you are, serve your purpose faithfully and always ring true. Because you can never unring a bell. And now that we understand how life is like a bell, ring true each day on your trek of life. You have a purpose that no one else can fill. And then join us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, creating a legacy. And tomorrow we will learn why life is like flying in a jet. Well, that will finish our podcast for today. If you've missed any of the previous podcasts, please check out Wisdom Trek on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spreaker, YouTube, or at wisdom-trek.com. If you enjoy our daily doses of wisdom, these little nuggets we consume each day, I encourage you to take the time to invest in yourself in these three ways. Invest with your time in improving Wisdom Trek by leaving your name, email address, and a comment on our website so that we can provide you with the wisdom and insights that best fit your needs. Number two, invest in yourself by listening to your seven minutes of wisdom through the Wisdom Trek podcast each day. And the best way to do this is to subscribe at iTunes or Stitcher and have it downloaded to you automatically. And third, invest in the lives of others by sharing with your family and friends in person or online to journey with us on our Wisdom Trek. And if you haven't done so already, please leave us a rating at iTunes or Stitcher so that we'll gain more exposure for others to join us on our Wisdom Trek. The journal for this podcast can be found at wisdom-trek.com, where we also have pictures, tweetable quotes, wisdom nuggets, and free resources. Thank you for allowing me to be your guide, mentor, but most importantly, your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.